Oh hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK and I just wanted to thank all of you who have subscribed, who share the videos and who support me generally and send me nice emails about how my emails, how my videos are helping you. Um, today I wanted to talk, just go over this situation where um, people who are transgender or non-binary um, are teaching that their sexual identities in school to four-year-olds and above. And my viewpoint is that that is much too young. I believe that um, as young children, um, if they do want to teach it, it should be in the teenage years when... Um, Teenagers are more likely to question their sexual identity if they feel like it. And at that point, they should approach, whether it's the teachers or their parents, and have someone discuss it. I do not think that it's age appropriate to talk to children who are four and five and upwards about sexual um, orientation um, and gender identity, because it's going to cause confusion. I mean, already, I mean, I remember when I was, um, when I was young and I used to think that, okay, if you wear trousers, does that mean you're, you know, you're trying to be a boy? And if my brother put on, wore a nurse's uniform, does that mean he's a sissy, as we used to call them back in the day? Um, but that is how you know, when I grew up, it was just male and female. And perhaps those who we used to call sissy did have a gender identity crisis and wasn't sure about who they were. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is that children will know when something isn't right. And at that point, they should have a choice. This is about the voice of the child. This isn't about adults running down their opinions, their beliefs down children's throats. We have something about safeguarding children. And if you're telling them, um, if you're giving them information that they cannot internalize and conceptualize, it, it, it's not right. You need to be able to talk to children at a certain age, in an age that they can understand and you can get a response from them and then there's some kind of feedback and you're having an engage, you're engaging with them. Not just have these little children sitting on the floor or whatever they're doing and you are coming in, whether you're coming in in transgender. I heard that one transgender woman um, started the teaching class in one gender and she ended the teaching class in another gender. I mean, it's, you know, you're, it's just going to cause confusion. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I don't know. I was born in an era where boys were boys and girls were girls. And now things have changed. And I admit we do have to adapt to it. We haven't got much choice, to be honest. But the fact of the matter is, is that I'm an adult. So I can accept, try to understand, rationalise, talk, discuss. Children can't do that. And I do not believe that children should be put in that position where they, and the parents can't even say anything. There's something from the Daily Mail I printed off. Um, according to the Daily Mail on the 24th of February 2019, primary school children from the age of five are to be taught about gay and transgender relationships as a part of compulsory lessons. It will also outline plans to withdraw parents' rights to remove their children from sex education aged 15 from 2020. That's next year. So parents aren't even going to have the right to, with, you know, to tell, to, you know, the right to tell their, to, well, the right, what their children are going to learn. And I know that, okay, that is just one subject, but I don't know how this is going to work. I think what will have to happen is for parents to um, talk to their children ahead and explain the differences. 
their understanding of the differences so that when the child goes to school or when it's taught to the child, the child has a better understanding, an open understanding and can look at it from different ways as opposed to the one way. Because apparently there was one girl and she um, put on some trousers. She didn't want to wear trousers. You know, like um, some little girls, four, five and six, they can wear trousers when they're going to school. And after she had this class, apparently she was saying she didn't want to wear trousers because she didn't want to be a boy. And that's what I mean. People should be able to choose what they want to wear without it being classified, without being categorised, without being pigeonholed. And I really do wish that the same effort that they put in, you know, transgender and non-binary going into the schools, to, to, um, teaching the children about acceptance and understanding about gender identity. I wish they would put the same effort into um, race awareness, go into the schools and teach the children at a young age about race and the differences where there is no real difference apart from the colour of your skin. You know, wouldn't it be nice? Because the Equality Acts ain't working. So if they can actually legislate, I mean, the terms, the um, alternative pronouns have actually been legislated, written into legislation in Canada. And there are 31 protected gender identities in America. I'm not quite sure if they've all got alternative pronouns, but the alternative pronouns are Z, C, Zim, A, Her, Co, Per, and you have to say them instead of him, her, their. Oh, I'm not quite sure how you say them or when to say them. But it's going to be difficult. And can you imagine if you have an accent? And I remember watching um, Big Brother and the footballer who had turned into a woman who had, I think that gender identity um, or gender reassignment, he was in there with a guy who knew him when he was a man, when he was a footballer. So he called him, no, he called, this is where it gets difficult. He called her him because that is how he recalled. He hadn't seen him since. And he got really offended, the, the, you know, the, the footballer. He got really offended that the guy who had known him for years as a man called him a he. Now my point is, is that there doesn't seem to be no leeway. There doesn't seem to be any tolerance for mistakes, or you know, if you make a mistake, if you if you if you forget to say something correctly, it's almost like they take offence. And why can't they just say, "Oh, I understand. You know, it must be hard for you to adjust." But yeah, just call me he. No, just call me she. In future, I'd appreciate it. But, you know, he went off and he started saying, he, she, call me, and he should know that I'm a she, and all of this kind of stuff. And it's like, if, you, if, you, if you're not prepared to make that adjustment in your vocabulary and accommodate those alternative pronouns, you're seen as a bigger or a homophobic. It shouldn't be like that. We should all have choices. I mean, to be honest... They've changed the word from, um, I think, from nigger, we've got wog, we've got coon, we've got spade, we've got coloreds, we've got, um, um, what else is there, African-American, and now they've thrown that out, and you've got blacks, and now you've got browns, and now people of colour. But you still get, us, you still get people calling us niggers. Is there anything we can do about it? Yes, we're offended. But that's not written into legislation that they can't call us a nigger. You know what I mean? And it's the same with um, Asians. Asians were called Pakis. Everybody, they called everybody a Paki. They made no distinction between Indians or Pakistanis. Even now, people do not know that they are two separate countries. And it's like people from um, China you know, they want to be distinguished South Asian from East Asia. Some of them don't want to be called Asians. They want to be called Orientals. 
And you know, you have people, you, we, we're having to continually adapt by um, adjusting to new language, new terms, year after year. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with adjusting, but it should, what's good for one is good for the other. And if you are going to go into schools at the age of five to press this transgender and non-binary issue, just talk about all of the different disparities, all of the biases, the gender, the, the, the sexual orientation, the race, the religion. Talk about all of them. Give them a class about everything, not just one thing. Because that doesn't, that to me doesn't seem right. That that's being shoved down their throat and nothing else. I mean, if you want to talk about respecting people's rights, human rights, and treating people with respect, do it across the board. Um, what else? Was there anything else I wanted to say? Um, yeah, there's that, that, you know, I was saying it was brought up in, uh, it's been written into legislation. It's called the Bill C-16. And it's been drawn up to protect transgender people and non-binary and transgender lifestyles are being taught in the schools as a way of encouraging acceptance. Um, yeah, oh yeah, and I remember, do you remember um, when they used to call um, biracial? I'm not even quite sure what the um, politically correct word is, but they were called um, half-caste and mulatto and mixed race and biracial. You know, and then in 2015, um, little people, we couldn't call them midgets anymore. They had to be called either dwarfism or little people. So I understand that, you know, terms have been changed and to accommodate and not to offend. But like I said before, it should be across the board. Even though if you don't want to offend one sector of people, you don't offend any. And that's all I'm saying. Um, I just wanted to make sure I covered most stuff. Yeah, I think that's all. Oh, yeah, you know, I was just thinking. When you're thinking about um, male and female, because this is another thing where children will get confused. That's why I'm saying it should be age appropriate. Because if a boy is not quite sure what the male role is or what a male is whether male is masculine or whether a male can be feminine or what the occupational roles are or the temperaments of male versus female you know that is why i'm saying it's it's not just about men wanting to be women or women wanting to be men it's much more profound than that and it's too much for a young child to internalize and understand and conceptualize. And when you think about um, Ainsley Harriet and Jamie Oliver, um, traditional female roles cooking in the kitchen, and then you have somebody called like Stephanie Newell and Tegan Fox doing traditionally male uh, activities, you know, because they're restless. How do you explain that? You know, neither of them are gay um, or transgender or non-binary they're quite distinctively male and female so you know it's it's all i'm saying it's too confusing to teach children from the age of four upwards if as adults it's difficult for us to understand and comprehend and actually get a grip of what's going on at the moment it just seems like it just seems like there's too many changes and so quick i mean you know, one minute there was gay and homosexual, we've just had to adapt to that, or we've just adjusted to that, that concept, a lot of people, and now it's like transgender and non-binary, and it, it's, it's, you know, for adults, it's difficult. They're, let's, so therefore, you know, I believe that children should be, wait, wait until they're teenagers, that's all I'm saying, and let their mothers be in the classroom when it's being taught so that their mothers have some kind of understanding of what's going on as well so it's holistic and yeah like i said add the other elements into it the um the race 
the disability, all of those things, and make it a whole class about differences. And that's all for now. I'm exhausted. Bye-bye.